Social Security is one of the most complex and confusing federal programs. With over 2,700 rules, it's no wonder that we're confused about when and how to start collecting and who to turn to for help. Welcome to Social Security Answers from the Experts, hosted by Martha Shedden. In this podcast series, Martha meets with professionals to provide you with the answers to questions about this most important financial decision. And now, here's your host, president and co-founder of the National Association of Registered Social Security Analysts, Martha Shedden. Okay, hello everyone and welcome to the show. I am your host, Martha Shedden. And I have the pleasure of welcoming Nicole Mayer to the podcast today. Nicole is a partner at Second Option Partners, providing the holistic planning service clients need to make informed financial life decisions with clarity and confidence. A graduate of DePaul University with a degree in finance and marketing, Nicole holds several professional designations, including accredited investment fiduciary, behavioral financial advisor, certified divorce financial analyst, and registered financial consultant. Nicole, I'm so happy to be talking with you today. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Um, Let's start with your company. Explain for our listeners how Second Opinion Partners is unique in their approach to financial planning. Absolutely. So a lot of times in the financial services industry, people only see a plan at the beginning. And it's kind of a guise to sell you something, whether it's an investment product, uh, any kind of product, or get you to steer you one way. Um, We believe that model is broken. We've believed it's been broken for the last 26 years. And so we've kind of said, hey, listen, it's all about education. You pay us a fee, a flat fee. We will educate you. And I'm not here to tell you one way is right or, or one way is wrong. If we can educate people, they can make decisions with confidence. And that's what's important is for you to be in the driver's seat. It's your future and you making the decisions with confidence. Wouldn't it be nice for someone to tell you the pros and cons of, you know, I always like to tell people, if you live in New York and you want to get to California, there's going to be detours along the way. If someone just told you the pros and cons of each of those detours, you could make those educated decisions along the way in case your Google Maps goes out on the way there. Um, That's a lot what planning is like. And you need to see the plan on an annual basis. It is not a one-time thing just to be sold a product. And I find so many people that we chat with, um, they either never got a plan, they just got recommendations or they saw a plan real quick once 10 years ago and have no idea if they're on track or not on track. Right, right. And so you're an independent fiduciary uh, providing this educational advice and using a fee for service model. For those of us in our audience who might not understand the true value of the word fiduciary and the fee for service model, can you explain the value of these two? Yeah, absolutely. So I always tell people, if you get something for free, be wary, you know, people have to make their money some way. Um, So we choose to be a fee, uh, fee for service. And, you know, pretty much, I couldn't say we're fee only, but we are primarily fee based, uh, meaning someone pays us a fee to go through a planning process. I don't care about your investments. I don't care what product you have. First, you're just going to pay to get educated. And guess what? You can sit back, relax, and get educated and not worry about, oh my gosh, what are they going to try and sell me? Because they have to make money. You know how we got compensated for our time. And the idea is is that we give you a full financial physical in a bunch of different areas, give you a prescription. And just like your annual physical, some things you're probably doing great. Some things you probably need. Here's some options for you to do a little bit better. You can take that prescription and fill it at whatever pharmacy you want. There's no obligation to work with us. And you should never feel obligated to work with any advisor. I think it's about what services you're looking for potentially long-term. There's a lot of things you can do on your own. And a lot of times someone says, Hey, you know what? I want my hand held through the process um, of life and I'm okay paying then an advisory fee long-term. Um, but fee for service is, you know, there are, is not a commission. Um, you know how we got paid and typically we plan, we charge a planning fee upfront. 
Okay, so that's, it's always been very confusing. The fee only, mm -hmm. um, fee based, <laughs> and then um, fee and commission, I guess you would say. So mm -hmm. what is the difference between fee only and fee based? Perfect. So fee only advisors only charge a fee. A lot of times, many fee advisors in the business do not actually help handle any of your investments ongoing. You may only pay a fee for the planning portion and don't earn any compensation any other way. Um, fee base is you can receive compensation uh, via fee base, um, but there might be commission based products. So what does that mean? Well, sometimes um, clients are looking for um, something to help with long-term care. And the best way to do it is not traditional long-term care insurance. It's using some annuity wrappers. Now, not all annuities are bad. It just depends what. Well, those are paid in a commission to an advisor. So if you ever do anything outside of fees, charging investments, that would be called fee-based if you can receive commissions in some way. And same with like, you know, there are clients who have bought long-term care insurance through us. Okay, well, insurance is considered a commission-based product. So we say fee-based. Um, that is not our business um, model. If something makes sense for a client or we need to solve for something, I have clients who um, have to do Medicaid planning or we do irrevocable trust and really extensive estate planning. Those attorneys tell us products that certain parts of their money need to go into so they can qualify for those things. And they happen to be, some of those happen to be commission-based. Okay. Okay, good. That's excellent. Thank you. Um, I always wonder too, what is your typical uh, client's financial status as, as a company? Um, is it all income groups, high net worth only, or is it the more middle class um, mass affluent yes. demographic? Yeah, I would say majority of our clients for ongoing guidance and advice and planning that are with us uh, beyond just doing the financial plan are probably the mass affluent. Um, I call it the middle-class millionaire. Um, they have very modest lifestyles, um, but have amassed uh, a good net worth and have saved, you know, put kids through college, probably average age of, you know, 55 to 59 um, is our average age of our client and has anywhere from a million to $10 million. Like that's our average client. From a planning perspective, I see everyone. If you can pay a fee, you can see us. So what does that mean? We've seen, um, I have a couple right now who's a young couple, they're getting married and they really found it. They only found advisors that would talk to them with the typical like insurance industry, which want to sell them an insurance policy. Uh -huh. They're like, we just need advice. Um, they happen to be first generation here in the States and they're willing to pay for that guidance and advice. So uh, we have a fee structure for them so they can pay, get educated, so they can be making the best decisions in their late twenties and put them in a really good position going forward. So I would say the mass affluent are definitely our, um, our bread and butter and who we've worked with for the last 26 years. Okay, wonderful. And this life print advantage proprietary educational tool, um, describe this process and what the goal is for your clients if they use this. Yeah. So here's the thing. Everybody's situation is unique. There is not one out there. So, you know, the last several years, we've seen the last 10 years where there's all these do-it-yourself platforms and they're great and they are an option and they do make sense for some people. But what it doesn't do is it doesn't take in your unique situation that, you know, here you have adult child that you've been still helping and now you help the grandkids and here's why, or this person has this issue and, you know, all these little minor caveats that are just unique to your family situation, a robo advisor, a do-it-yourself platform can't give you. And I say our life print advantage process is pretty unique. Um, we, we first start out to understand like, what kind of money mind are you? Are you a protector? Are you all about other people? Are you the person who's like a spendthrift that we call it a happy money mind? Who are you? Because that really helps put us in a place to understand like, okay, there's um, somebody who's, a, we call it a commitment money mind. And that commitment money mind person is always thinking about others and never doing stuff for themselves. So you know what? They're always going to think about their kids, their grandkids first, and not necessarily think about their own well-being. 
a protector money mind is always going to say they don't feel like they have enough. They're constantly trying to protect their family. And then the happiness money mind, you could be a blend of all of the, all three of these or two of them. Um, a happiness is like, Hey, you only live once, you know, like <laughs> I'll make more next year. So typically people fall into one of those categories or a blend. Once we find that out, it's very interesting. We, a lot of times we help couples get on the same page. They're like, Oh, um, we have a protector money mind and a commitment money mind. The protector is like, never feels like they have enough. Why? You know, I'm thinking of a client off the top of my head. Um, you know, her father passed away in an air, in, a, in an airline crash it, way back when, and growing up, her mom never felt like she had enough. And even though she has more than she'll ever spend, she still doesn't feel like, so a lot of times it stems from something. And when we understand where those come from, we can start to make decisions because so many of our financial decisions, it's very easy for me to do a plan and tell you what makes sense financially. It's very difficult for someone to look at you and connect that emotional piece to making that financial piece. And sometimes what makes sense on paper and a plan does not make sense for you. So our process is really meant to take that emotional piece that you have and the actual, the quantitative, the numbers and the plan and marry those two together and really get you. And if there's a significant other on the same page and making sure that you understand each other so that you can make those decisions. And we want you, our goal is to help you live your best life. Uh Um, this stuff shouldn't keep you up at night. So how do we overcome some of those fears? How do we help you manage? Also, just when you think about money different ways, how do we help you manage that and live your best life? And that's our proprietary process. Okay. Well said, you know, I'm a social security geek. Uh And so I have to ask you that, how does your approach, does it include a detailed social security analysis and that income planning with your retirement age clients? What do you do for them? We sure do. So first and foremost, I always find out what are your thoughts on social security? Because I get everything I have, you know, Hey, my friends um, told me I have to take it early. It's going to run out. I have, Oh, I have to wait till 70. You know, I normally get some kind of extreme never normally right in the middle. And I say, all right, first, there's going to be an an answer that makes sense from a financial standpoint that fits in your plan. And then there's going to make sense from an emotional standpoint. And so we try and marry the two. We do do an extensive social security analysis for each and every client that comes through our office um, to make sure, hey, they understand there are so many strategies for a married couple um, making social security elections. And there is not a one size fits all. It really does encompass your plan. And sometimes it's just personal belief. You know, if I get someone who's like, doesn't at all believe in the system or doesn't foresee that, you know, they, I love when people tell me, oh, I'm healthy, but they're on, you know, 30 medications and you can tell they're not physically healthy. And you're like, well, you know, it's probably, and they're the ones who want to wait till 70 you know, you try and massage it and say, you know what, it might be in your best interest to take early. And here's why we can maximize, you know, if your parents also did your legacy, your parents didn't live long. So there is not a one size fits all. I do think it takes a comprehensive approach by doing you usually doing a social security analysis, building it into the plan, and then really deciding what makes sense for the client's lifestyle distribution. Great, great. And retirement financial planning is very different than in the accumulation and savings years. I personally think it's extremely more difficult. Um, How should those needing help with their social security and retirement planning go about finding the right financial professional for that specific type of planning? Yep. Well, I, I think there's two things. One, when you're in the accumulation phase, it's very easy Um, When I say that you're still making money, it's very, very different when you are in, I call it the distribution phase, you're taking money out, there's things going on in the market, there's so much noise, you have more time to listen to all that noise, (laughs) and our emotions take over big time. So when you're looking for an advisor, I think it's really important to someone that's going to educate you on what you have and someone that gives you multiple options. If you are a do-it-yourselfer and you've always been, or your situation's been rather um, simple and not complex, 
great. You still may be able, may be able to do it on your own, or you may want to just be, have a relationship with someone that gives you a pat on the back and says, Hey, you're doing a great job. Keep doing it. Here are things to look out for on, you know, detours along the way that you may have and to feel better. So I think someone who definitely has an education consultative approach is really, Uh really important. And then don't feel like, I think sometimes people who have always done it themselves um, and they start to say, I think I need someone to do it as they make that transition in retirement. It's not that you can't do it. It's that emotional component that is much more difficult to put aside when we get into distribution phase because you're not adding anymore. So when you, there's a lot of noise, like there is this year and we're having, you know, a negative market year to date, it's much more difficult not to make major, major mistakes. So I would say, you know, sometimes, or you just want someone to check in once in a while, but make sure someone's educating you along the way, educating you on the level of risk, telling you what's the worst that could happen and how, what you're doing, the best situation and making sure that they, I always say too, looking for a fee only or fee-based advisor that you're going to pay just to get a second opinion is probably the best step to take. Um, You don't have to feel obligated to use them for, you know, in retirement for ongoing guidance and advice. Maybe it's just a pat on the back to make sure, hey, you're doing great or here's some some fine tuning you can do. Right. It's so interesting because finances are always one of those topics that that uh, people uh, historically, you know, our parents didn't share much with us and and things have changed too. But is it okay to uh, speak with financial advisors and interview them? Absolutely. Absolutely. Give them a call. Um, I've gotten introduced to hundreds of people over the years. And a lot of times they're like, hey, I just want to understand your process. And I tell people, talk to several people, here are Uh things to look for. And I always warn people, free comes with a price tag. So if they're not charging you, they're making their money somewhere, find out how they're making their money. Also look at your employer benefits. A lot of times your employer benefits may have uh, planning services. Our firm started 27 years ago with doing executive financial planning. Big fortune 500 firms paid us to take their executive and C level um, executives through a planning process. Um, a lot of them didn't know about it, uh, but it was a, it's a great thing. And also um, for some 401k plans that we administer for our clients who have small businesses, you know, their employees get all of our services at no cost um, as part of their employee benefits. So I think it's really important to, if you have employer benefits, to see if you have that available and um, don't be afraid to pay a fee. It's like anything else. Um, you can have an introductory call with someone, but if you want to go through with more extensive planning, guidance, and advice, you may pay a fee, but you know what, then there's no obligation beyond that. That's really good advice about the employer uh, benefits. Yes. Yes. Um, Because I think that's overlooked. Definitely. Not not even considered. Definitely. A lot of people will be like, oh, I don't know. The 401k representative came in, but doesn't realize, you know, we're a firm who we, you know, 401ks aren't our market, but because our clients have run very successful businesses, we have a bunch of 401k plans. So The good news is, is the clients get, um, the participants get all the services that the owner paid for at no charge, which is huge. And they'll do a consultative, we do an educational consultative approach, not going to sell you anything. And you should take advantage of some of those. Yeah, definitely. People often use the word holistic um, to describe their approach and services. And I, I feel very strongly that the holistic retirement planning, it takes that holistic approach, but what do you actually achieve with that whole, uh, as a holistic result that includes all facets of retirement planning? So here's the thing. If you have, I get this all the time, especially right now we're in tax season. Your accountant is looking at something with goggles. Like I call them their accountant eyes. And you know, all they see is certain numbers, certain things, uh, you have a high dividends, high this or whatever or you had a lot of cap gains this year, they are very just narrow focused. That's what they look at. Your estate planning attorney, same thing, looking at legal, the law, not necessarily looking at what's best in the best interest for you and your family on a whole level. 
where I come in and um, many advisors like me in the industry and we say holistic. And I think that, I think that word has become overused yeah. and people are not all doing it is listen, you have to take into estate planning, tax planning, retirement planning, insurance, and investments, those five categories, they all intertwine. And if you are taking advice from an investment advisor, a financial planner, and they are literally only looking at the investments and they never brought up estate planning, they never brought up taxes, they never brought up insurance, you know, moves that you make in your investments could impact your Medicare and your medical right, insurance. Right, exactly. So all of these are intertwined. And it's very important that someone is looking at the whole picture. They don't just have their goggles on. So a lot of times I see investment advisors, they're worried about getting your assets and managing those assets and getting a fee for it. And you know what? They make dumb moves that cost you money. And that might be on the Medicare insurance and then from the tax perspective. So really understanding and from an estate planning, they don't title the accounts properly. They're not looking at the beneficiaries that something this might be a better beneficiary than the other because it, it'll go to that person more tax efficiently. So it's really important that someone's looking at how all of this comes together and making sure that they hit all of those components. If they're not hitting it, they're not holistic. And you know what? They're only looking at their component. And I, I would say buyer beware. You want someone that looks from a 30,000 foot view and sees, again, I keep using it. It's you were creating a roadmap and you want someone to tell you that there's going to be detours along the way. But guess what? When we know there's a detour or a speed bump, we can prepare for that. And that's what you want. And that's truly what a holistic advisor will do. So we need a new word for that that would we do. Actually, um, it truly encompass what that entails. And yes. one of the things that I uh, know about is the interrelationship between the Social Security income, how that's taxed, mm -hmm. and how um, withdrawals from our retirement accounts are taxed 100%. So yes. it's a complicated puzzle to Absolutely. put all that together. I don't think it's doable without yep. software. Agree. Um, what software do you use at your company? Um, we use a uh, social security timing um, is uh, done by a company called Covizium. Uh, yep. And then we also use uh, the planning software that we use is Money Guide Pro, which is one of they have the largest market share from a financial planning standpoint. Um, and they have a really good tool inside their planning software. Um, we compare against both of those to really look and see what makes the most sense. Again, sometimes the planning software does things a little bit different than just the straight up social security planning software. But again, using both of those tools gives us a good idea what makes the most sense for the client. So I know a big part of your company is about um, life transitions. Yes. Which life transition do you think is the most difficult to help and help your clients plan for? So I will say retirement is a one of the largest life transitions. That and helping aging parents, to be honest, um, because a lot of times the helping aging parents comes in maybe five to 10 years before your own retirement. So you just you're starting to hit things that you normally wouldn't think about. So those are probably the two biggest. And really the retirement piece is because there is, um, for a lot of people, as exciting as retirement sounds, it's not exciting in the sense of like, oh my gosh, there's this whole new chapter. And you know what? My whole life has been work. And I actually loved what I do. And now I have to figure out what my life looks like in this next chapter. And there is a big fear when you have a paycheck coming in every two weeks and then you go to no paycheck and then you see this large account that you have been able to save for and you have to take money out. Yes. And we are in a climate like we are today with, you know, historical inflation and bad, you know, the market is down. It is a very scary time. And many times we make emotional decisions that we would not normally do in a rational time. So this is where it says, hey, this is where... It's nice to have someone by your side helping you make those decisions and or someone to blame if, they, if they're wrong. No. Um, but it's nice to have someone by your side helping you make those decisions because emotions do take over, you know, and as much as we can be a rational level-headed 
person that transition to putting money in to all of a sudden taking money out is so difficult. Even for my most like easiest clients, it's just um, a hard mindset. So a lot of times what I do is I like to do what I call um, a practice retirement run, um, either six to 12 months before. So if I know a client, you know, they're going to have a fixed income of their social security and so much coming from a pension and distributions. I say, listen, that money, when it comes to a paycheck, everything else will just put away. And normally they've been saving it anyways, but it's just fluff. Like, let's just practice what it looks like on that and see how it feels. Um, and we just do like a little bit of practice retirement play, um, so that people get used to it. But I will say the most challenging is that, um, stopping contributing and now start taking. Yeah. Especially if that's a, a really concrete cutoff, you've been working 40 hours or more a week, and then you just stop Yeah, that transition to some type of part-time or like you say, a trial, um, I think is, is really valuable. Well, and then wow. every day is a Saturday. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was asking people, how much do you spend on a Tuesday versus Saturday? You probably spend more on a Saturday or Sunday than you do on a Tuesday, you know, running to Costco or doing buying grandkids things, whatever it is. But, you know, now it's like, okay, well, what am I going to do? You know, I look at it for myself. I look at clients as they're going through a transition. I don't necessarily have any hobbies because I truly love what I do. So when I'm not working, I'm working on my business and I just love it. It is my hobby. I was just talking with friends and um, I said, oh, you got to find something else. I'm like, I know, but I actually like enjoy it. So I get where these clients are in the same boat as me. And they're like, well, what do I do next? Do I join a book club? Like, <laughs> why am I spending my time? So it's that pace and then the money component. So you're, yeah. you're kind of battling both. Yeah. And some people um, may not ever fully what we all understand is retire, which is really yes. just quick at working full time a lot. For many people, that's not the goal at the end. It's, Correct. You know, Correct. and um, that's okay. And that's also normalizing that that's okay. And if you, you know, I always tell my clients, we're getting you to financial independence. That doesn't mean you stop working. It just means like, Hey, at the end of the day, you decide to take a part-time job and they're not treating you right. You're not doing, or, you know, not letting you off for your granddaughters, whatever you can tell them goodbye and get the next part-time job. Cause it doesn't matter. So we're just working for financial independence and not necessarily for retirement, because I think the word retirement, it, we really, we used to formally be known as retirement planning group. And we changed our name about uh, 12 years ago because retirement did have like such a negative kind of sad connotation to it. You know, like, okay, I'm going to hang it up and I'm going to sit yes. on my recliner for the rest of my life. And that's not at all what's happening today. Um, we see people more and more active working in some capacity, whatever it may be until they really, from a health perspective, can't anymore. Yeah. And so that just leads into my next question. How can people change that mindset or philosophical approach towards retirement to help ensure that it is the best time of their life and not a huge letdown? Yeah, I think so. This is where I talked about playing that money mind game. We do also do a card game. It's called Honest Conversations. And this is really where I get into clients and we start to put down what you value most in life. And you could do this at any age. So I don't care if you're approaching retirement or listen, you're in your forties and you're like, okay, it's like, I'm in the hamster wheel. I'm doing the same thing over and over again. Am I really enjoying life? You know, people always say, do what you love. Okay. Well, to an extent, you got to pay bills. You got to do, you know, so there's work, but how do we, you know, life is about trade-offs. So how do we start prioritizing the things that really fill us up and make us happy and make us feel like we're living our best life? And that is different for everyone. You know, maybe for me, it's spending time with loved ones. Like that's one of our card choices on there. Okay. Well, what does that actually mean? Well, it means like, you know, my son is 12 now. If he ends up, you know, I'm in Chicago, if he ends up on some other coast, guess what? I'm moving there. I don't care whatever it is because he's my only one. I mean, he may not like that now, but, um, but I'm moving there because I want to spend time with grandkids or I want to be, I have to figure out how to re that's going to make me feel fulfilled and happy. It has nothing to do with money. Um, maybe health, health and wellness is another card. 
um, on our cards there that we have. And, you know, well, what am I doing to fulfill that and feel really good about myself? Okay. Well, I even picking that card at 40 years old, I say, okay, well, guess what? I'm not doing what I need to do right now because I am jam packed from every day from 8 a.m. in the morning till six or seven at night. So what am I doing today to make that happen? Because that's actually going to help me live my best life has nothing to do with money, but it has, Hey, I need a block time. I need to do this. We do the same thing for retirement. How are you living your best life? Okay. Well, let's prioritize what is most important to you and start designing your life around that. And you'll be surprised. Some of it has to do with money. One of my cards that I always pick personally, is financial security, you know, when I was in a freshman in college, my dad lost his job through the tech bubble and it was very difficult for my family. And luckily, you know, I was able to stay in college, but like for me, I have a big financial security need. Okay. So how am I fulfilling that? You know, what does that mean? Does that mean I need to make sure I max out my 401k? It's different for everyone. Some of those people may feel that in retirement. So it's really starting to value what's most important, designing a life around that. That is not your typical, like, you know, vacations might be important. That's not your typical advisors not going through that and saying, what do you value most? No, okay. they're talking about dollars and cents, dollars and cents, dollars and cents. And guess what? You have all the money you want and you're still not feeling fulfilled in retirement. There's a problem. So how do we start to design your life around that? And that's where we start first. It has nothing to do with the money. We will get to the money and figure out the trade-offs that we have to make to get you to live your life. But if I know I'm fulfilling your honest conversation cards first, you are going to live your best life and feel very satisfied in retirement. So it's really about valuing it. You can do it at any point in life. You don't have to be in retirement, but you know, I have 30, 40 and 50 year olds that go through it. I have a 50, you know, I have a 50 some year old client who's going to be going through job transition, not ready to be done, but is really going gosh, I'm at a CEO level. Do I want to stay there? Like, I just, I missed all my kids games. I did this. I did that. I'm ready to do something different. And we went through this exercise and we're like, all right, it had nothing to do again with money. Money became a component of it and their investments became a component of it. But first it was like, how do we design the life you want? He's like, well, health and wellness is important to me. I've seen too many of my colleagues you know, die of a heart attack, you know, paying for my kid's college still is important and blah, blah, blah. So we start list those out. Okay. Well now we can back into what kind of job you need and kind of the financial component behind it. Well, hopefully the financial industry is moving generally in the direction that you're taking us because it is so much more than just about money. And it's such an emotional topic. It is. Um, Uh, we're about to wrap it up, but what do you believe are the most common questions regarding retirement planning and social security specifically that people don't even know they should be asking? Yeah, absolutely. So I think when it comes to social security specifically, I think the first thing to always know, and I know they've heard this from your show before, there is not one size fits all, um, strategy for you and your strategy may be be very different from other family members or friends. And I think one thing that is very important that people may not be asking is when someone is giving you guidance and advice on social security, they need to be looking at the whole picture from an estate planning perspective. If one spouse predisposes the other from a tax perspective, how's it impacting your insurance, um, Medicare Part B premiums that might come out of your social security. There's many different facets that you need to look at. And Again, if you have a lot of retirement assets, but not a lot of non-retirement assets, your plan may be very different than your neighbors or friends or other family members or vice versa. So I think it's really understanding whoever is giving you the guidance and advice on certainly your social security component to your planning component is that they are looking at all of those. Don't be afraid to ask them like, okay, well, how does this impact estate planning? How does this impact my taxes? Does it impact my taxes? What about uh, Medicare Part B premiums? What does that do? You know, and depending on when you retire, if you retire early. And we just finished talking about, you know, retirement doesn't look the same for anyone and people are working longer because they enjoy it and they want to. One of the biggest mistakes I see all the time is people are stuck in this notion of 
electing social security because someone told them to do it. And then they're like, oh, they got this consulting gig or they got this part-time job that they're making more money. And now they've just blown, they took their social security early. Someone to really look through and say, how are we planning your life? And then how does social security fit into that? And making sure we're maximizing and doing what's in your best interest. Right. And not, not subjecting them to the earnings test if they've. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's been so fun to talk to you. Where can people uh, go to learn more about you? And do you work remotely? Yeah. So we have clients in 48 states that we are proud to serve. It's our 27. I keep thinking I said 26 year, but it's our 27th year in business. People can find us at um, secondpartners.com. That's 2ndpartners.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and all the social media as well. Um, But we'd love to hear from you. Comments, questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Great. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you.